So today we're going to talk about selling your gold for fiat profits. And uh, I did a video recently which got quite a bit of a reaction. And it was what would happen if you were to continue selling, sorry, to continue buying your gold at the current high prices, which at the time don't seem that high anymore. And that was only, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago. So at the moment, we're seeing gold pushing up into the $2,300 range and towards the top end of the 1800s in, uh, in pound terms. So if we had another month in April, like we had in March, we could easily sort of see the 2000 pound mark in, in pound terms and, you know, perhaps getting on into the 2400s, getting even close to the $2,500 mark in, uh, obviously in dollars. So I got these three half sovereigns a little while ago and uh, the 1925 essays. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing with these, whether I'm, you know, accumulating them, trying to corner the market with them. I obviously like the George Sovereigns, you'll know that. Uh, quite interesting, there's only 1925 and 1926 SA available in the halves. But uh, today, well, and there's, you know, some proof versions. But um, yeah, today we are going to talk about selling your gold for fiat profits. Now, I've obviously got quite a bit of gold that has been bought at lower prices than uh, the current highs. And some people are perhaps thinking about selling, taking some profits, you know, with gold coming up nearly 20% in uh, just the last sort of six, seven weeks. It's, uh, you know, perhaps a question that's on a few people's minds. So personally, I wouldn't just sell for the sake of selling just to sit in cash. But if I was looking perhaps at some other assets, so if you were maybe looking at a house or property or something like that, then it might make sense to take some profits on your gold to, you know, put into something else. So, for example, property prices went up quite a lot from 2020 to sort of 2022, 23. Um, obviously, they've been trending up for years before that, but there was quite a spike in the UK there in a lot of areas. So for some people, you know, if you bought your gold then when it was cheaper and, uh, Obviously, property was as well. Now, property has obviously risen. It's actually stalled off in the last year or two. It's not really, you know, made those same sort of gains. Whoops. Um, so, you might be thinking then, okay, well, for the house I would want, am I going to get that for less ounces of gold or more ounces of gold than before? You know, looking at the ratio of your piece of gold to your property, for example. So you might not have enough for a full property, you know, you might not have like hundreds of ounces or tens of ounces. It might only be a few, but maybe on a smaller scale, you know, there might be some things that you could perhaps put that money towards and uh, maybe it would just help out, you know. So, for example, in the UK, we have a, a savings account which you can buy stocks and shares in and uh, stocks and shares ISA. There's a £20,000 a year limit currently, so you can put in £20,000. And all those gains or losses or whatever you make in there are free from capital gains. You're also free from dividend tax in there as well if it's a UK share. So there are many advantages to having it. So you could think, well, hang on, I could fill my, you know, 20k ISA account and buy shares with, you know, what gold that's gone up by 25%. Maybe you've, you know, maybe you've got your gold at 1500 an ounce and you sell it now. You're actually getting that account filled up with just 15,000 of actual money in. So the thing is, though, you know, if you're making fiat profits, you do have to consider the actual value of the fiat. You know, what's happened to it over time? Are you actually any better off or not? So for me, uh, people who have been watching the channel for a while, you'll know that gold is just a part of my long term savings. You know, I'm not relying on this for an income or anything like that. It's you know just a bit of fun. I originally started out, wanted a few ounces of gold to, you know, cover a rainy day in non-fiat. And, uh, yeah, it escalated to uh, a fair size stack in the end, you know, for a private individual. It's it's not finished, you know, and uh, like I say, it's changed over time. I've got many sovereigns. I've got one ounce coins. I've got a bit of a mix. Uh, I've got some nice dinosaur coins as well. But unfortunately, no precious metals in that. Nice, though. Uh, so anyway... You need to consider, if you are thinking of selling at these prices, you know, you need to consider, are you actually going to be any better off? Are you going to be able to actually buy more stuff with the money? Or has gold just simply kept up? You know, is it just kept up with inflation? There's obviously an opportunity cost to holding gold. You're not gaining any interest or anything like that. But it is here. It is there. 
and uh, whilst you've got it, you know, it's not like eroding away, it's just going to sit there. It's not like the, you know, price will go down and you're forced to sell because of debt or something like that. If you've got your gold and you own it outright, you know, you've presumably not taken a loan out to buy your coins, then you can just simply wait and hold it and uh, hope that it looks after you over time. So I'm curious, are you looking at selling your gold for some fiat profits? Have you got something that you have your eye on or are you just sitting tight following the ride and uh, enjoying the journey?